The final one we want to talk about is the biologically produced light from organisms or bioluminescence, light from organisms. And living light is really one of those fascinating things. I've been fascinated about it since I first saw waves glowing in the dark or organisms glowing. And you may have seen going down to the beach at night, seeing waves crashing and glowing green. That's an example of bioluminescence, but it's far more uh, widespread in the world ocean than perhaps you even appreciate. So let's look at some examples of that. And it's really one of those tools that it turns out that Organisms, completely unrelated organisms, have come up with bioluminescence to solve a particular problem. It's an example of what we call convergent evolution, where some of the tools that we talked about earlier, like the cytochrome oxidase in bacteria cells in a cow, as that's one that's been passed on from one set of organisms to the next, bioluminescence is probably one of those where organisms have come up with the the right tool or come up with the genetic code independently through mutations come up with a code for bioluminescence to solve a particular problem whether it's mating or whether it's uh, scaring off a predator or whether it's attracting uh, a predator a prey and all the different kinds of things we're going to talk about in just a minute the basic chemistry of bioluminescence is Again, surprising given the um, different numbers of species, but let's take a short look at it now. It involves a protein called luciferin and a protein called luciferase, an enzyme, and through the ac action of luciferin and luciferase in the presence of oxygen produce this blue light at about 470 nanometers, what we see as bioluminescence. Now, some organisms, like marine, like terrestrial organisms, have a whole range of colors that they produce. Fireflies are an example you might be familiar with, especially if you've lived ever lived back east. They have a kind of yellowish sort of um, bioluminescent light. Marine organisms are much more confined, usually in the blues, but we'll see again that there that some uh, marine organisms um, use other wavelengths, but by far most oceanic bioluminescence is centered around this wavelength. Why would you use blue light if you were bioluminescent in the ocean? Going back to chapter 7, we remember that blue light transmits the best through the ocean. So if you're trying to hail somebody down, if you're trying to find a mate, if you're trying to attract something to eat, you want to emit the kind of light that transmits the best in the ocean. And that's around 470 nanometers, blue light. So this set of reactions, again, with slight variations, can create this bioluminescent light. Here's figure 1218 from the book, and here are really just uh, some of the proposed reasons that organisms might bioluminesce. An anglerfish uses bioluminescence to attract prey. This particular organism, which I believe is a type of lanternfish, may actually use bioluminescence to light up copepods to eat them. Some organisms, such as this time bomb uh, krill, this shrimp that releases this sort of time bomb of bioluminescence, they may use bioluminescence to escape predators. This sudden bright light throws the predator off the trail and allows the organism to escape. Some organisms, some fishes use bioluminescence as counterillumination. By creating a blue glow on their underbelly, anything looking up at them will essentially miss them because this blue color matches the color of light at the surface. So this counter-illumination is a kind of camouflage. They match the color of their underside to match the surface of the ocean and in that way escape being seen. They really turn themselves invisible. Organisms may also use bioluminescence to attract mates. It might be that they're waving these lights and maybe the color of light or the, the rapid um, motions of the light or the kinds of patterns that they use are some kind of signal for mating. And finally, the, the funniest one or the one that we just talked about, the uh, most amazing one, I think, is this burglar alarm response where an organism will produce a sticky web of bioluminescence in response to a predator 
and in doing so, get that sticky web of bioluminescence on another organism and then attract its predators, what we call the burglar alarm response. Well, it isn't just fish and larger organisms that bioluminesce, but it's also bacteria. And amazingly enough, these students at Montana State University of Bozeman produced essentially bioluminescent bacteria art. And that's what this picture is about. These are bioluminescent bacteria, and they grew them up in a way that gave them these interesting patterns. And so this is really just a painting of bioluminescent bacteria. Just one of those G kind of things. All right, let's go back and talk about uh, and summarize all the things we've learned here. Life evolved from a common ancestor. We have an amazing diversity of light, and we just really just so barely touched on all the variety of life and its adaptations in this chapter. Uh, scientists use a number of methods to classify life and piece it together. Uh, ocean habitats vary in space and time, and global scale adaptations influence flows of energy and matter. Well, I hope you enjoyed these sets of lectures on marine life, and we'll talk more about some aspects of marine life, particularly as it relates to ocean productivity in our following chapters. But if you have any uh, questions or if you're interested in these topics, check out my website, oceansonline.com or exploreworldocean.com, where you'll find lots, pages and pages, hundreds of pages, in fact, of descriptions of different kinds of marine organisms. You might also look in the book and try Exploration Activity 12-1, learning more about the evolution of whales. And check out the Blue Planet series, which has an amazing set of uh, video pictures of different kinds of ocean life. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'll see you next time.